I know what this looks like, and this is not the prettiest cookie that's out there. It is not very photogenic, and I have had to convince many a child and adult to please just try it first before they make a judgment. They taste way better than they look. Welcome to Master of Chem Obstery, where motherhood and science collide. My name is Joy, I'm a mom and a teacher, and I love to share my experiences with others. In this joyful food series, I'm gonna be sharing how to make some of my favorite desserts, treats, meals, and dishes that will hopefully add some flavor to your life. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make my grandma's no-bake chocolate cookies. In one bowl or directly into a medium-sized saucepan, measure out two cups of granulated sugar, add in three tablespoons of powdered cocoa, you can see mine are heaping tablespoons. Even though I'm a scientist and a science teacher and I'm all about precision and accuracy in that realm, when it comes to cooking and baking, I don't really get too caught up in the measurements. Lastly, add a half cup of milk. We use 2%. I'm guessing that the less milk fat that you have, the less delectable the cookies will be. So if you're worried about calories, then go with your gut. I mean, that is if you're trying to reduce your gut, I guess. When I'm making these cookies, I'm making them because I want comfort food, I want warm memories, and I want something that tastes great. So calories are just non-existent that day. Another thing that needs to be done ahead of time is to get some parchment paper out. I usually lay out two sheets worth, and this allows you to have a place to spoon out your cookies on a non-stick surface. I also pre-measure the rest of the items. Two cups of oatmeal, a half cup of peanut butter, and a half cup of butter. I do this all ahead of time because you'll need to add them in rather quickly after you cook the initial ingredients on the stove top. The only thing I didn't measure out ahead was the vanilla, and that's really easy to do at the end. With the sugar, cocoa, and milk now in the saucepan, stir in and heat at around medium heat, between five to seven. It does depend on the pan you're using and the amount of heat you get from your burner. In my demo, you can see I was using this non-stick saucepan but I actually prefer using this old double boiler that doesn't have a handle and is very well used. I tend to get better results with that. But what you're gonna need to do if you are gonna try making these cookies, if you do it multiple times, you might have to test out what heat's gonna work best with which saucepan you're using. And you will also find that each time you make it, you might get a little bit different results in terms of texture and appearance. Once the mixture starts boiling, you need to put the timer on for three minutes and you need to stir constantly. If you boil too long, the end result will be dull and more brittle cookies. If you boil less, the cookies will be shinier and softer, but if you don't boil enough, then they won't solidify properly. It might take some trial and error for you to get it right or whatever your version of right might be. I prefer mine to be a little bit softer to be a little bit shinier, but there might be some people who like them to be a little bit more solid. Either way, they taste the same. It's just the texture can be a little bit different depending on how they cook and how long you boil them and whether or not you get distracted by your kids and now you boiled it for five minutes instead of the three and well, things happen. Once you have boiled the mixture sufficiently, remove from heat and add in the butter. I let that mostly melt as I stir it and then add the peanut butter, toss in the oatmeal and finally measure out and stir in a half teaspoon of vanilla. Using a large spoon, place as many spoonfuls with as big or small of an amount as you wish the cookies to be, knowing that they will spread out a bit. The number you end up making really depends on the size of your spoon, maybe an average about 15 per batch. Let them sit probably about 30 minutes to firm up and then they're ready to eat. I always make sure to leave a little bit left over in the saucepan to scrape up just for me though. I understand that there are many recipes out there that are similar to this. But what I do know is that this recipe got handed down to me from my dad who got it from his mom, my grandmother. Making these cookies brings me two things. One, precious memories of my grandmother and spending time with her. And two, some amazing cookies that just taste awesome and make me really happy. I hope you enjoy them too. If you tried out this no-bake chocolate cookies recipe, please let me know how did it turn out. If you have any variations on this, I'd love to hear it. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, as well as to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Our experiences can teach us so much, and I love sharing them with you. Thanks for watching.